We have Ken went up into the corners and, and, and everything is being received. But if, if you don't push the button, uh, nothing's going to happen. All right. Um, David? What? Yes, George. Go to the order, right? What? We're good. No, not yet, George. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll get there. Um, I'd like to, uh, um, Eddie, Eddie has a doctor's appointment. He can't be with us today. But uh, Sebastian, would you like to uh, deliver uh, the treasurer's report? Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to start today with our July 2018 financials and go to the middle column where it has the year-to-date actual, and right next to that is the yearly budget. Uh, as of right now, for the first seven months of 2018, we're within budget, so that's good. And you'll notice that we have a variance at the end uh, on the very last column, so that way you can see what's remaining in the budget for the year. Uh, the other item that I wanted to mention is uh, we were approved for the CDARS account, so we've reflected that in the budget, and when we start talking about the budget, I'll show you which line item that is. Um, the only two notes that I had for the July financials is the security expense. Uh, the reason why it's over budget was just a timing issue, so one payment was paid for a period for June. Uh, so. Uh, you know, that's been updated, so that was still within budget. And then the irrigation, it's the same item. There were some repairs. Overall, we're still within budget on both of those line items. Also in your package, you should have a budget. And at the top of it, I believe it says sheet one. And it's about three pages. And I just wanted you know, one more time about the September 21st at 10 a.m. in Classroom C, which is a Friday. Uh, this is the budget that we're going over. So this is the same copy that will be distributed at that meeting. As of right now, we have a $5 increase per unit per month. Now, that difference is, is almost entirely just from a change in reserve. So when we have the meeting on September 21st, we'll be able to go through those items and discuss that. Uh, and the next thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the budget is I just wanted to explain what the columns were. So that way, when you come on the 21st, uh, if you have any questions, you'll know, you know, basically what you're looking at and how I put it together. So when you're looking at the budget on that first page, the first column The first column were the expenses for the first six months. So you'll see that's reflected as January through June 2018. The second column is the estimated 2018 expense. So I basically uh, you know, just estimated what I thought we would spend for the remainder of the year. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll skip to the fourth column. The fourth column is the approved 2018 budget. The fifth column, which is reflected the estimated budget versus actual, uh, that mainly is what the estimate versus the budget is for 2018. And then the final column is the budget 2019 proposed. When you go down that list, you'll notice that most of the numbers are relatively the same until you get down to the very end of page number two where you'll see a difference in the reserves. And then on the notes column, uh, you can see notes in there of where some of the numbers uh, came from. It's the same thing that I believe you received last year in the reporter or as a handout. Uh, you know, we'll add to those knit, uh, notes. So at the final meeting, we'll kind of go through and as we talk about each column, we'll go ahead and add items to it. Do I have any questions about the July financials or the budget? And then, uh, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but September 21st, um, you know, if you have any questions after reviewing it or, 
anything that you want to explain further. If you have any procedural issues about, uh, you know, a question about something on the report that you'd like to find out that you need for your research purposes, uh, go ahead and let us know at the office and then I'll go ahead and get that answer for you. Uh, thank you. Um, I want to point out at the last meeting of the Finance Committee, I don't believe we had, um, I don't think we had 10 people in the room over and above the committee members. Um, folks, it's a $7 million um, event and it's your money and mine. If you have anything you want to raise, be there, okay? Uh, Sebastian will be there, and we have it all set up. We can make changes in real time, and that's the time to be heard. Uh, thank you, Sebastian. Um, how many of you received the UCO audit by email? Okay, it's admirable. I only sent out 1,200. Uh, so if you uh, wish to uh, obtain a hard copy of the audit, please come in to Yuko. All right, everything is fine. It's a clean audit, but uh, it's kind of something interesting you, you might want to have a look at. All right, um, let's go around and hear from the officers. Uh, I've gotten quite a few letters on the takedown of Mr. Waldman's fence, uh, about 1,300 and some odd feet. And obviously there is a concern about security, uh, in particular Golf's Edge, but from other places as well. I have received letters. And people are afraid they're going to leave the village uh, I hope you heard PBSO here this morning. They're running um, special and extra patrols. We have put in additional checkpoints called, uh, they're called Deggy points. Uh, in, in essence, a modern version of the old night watchman's clock where, 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 where the guard actually has to be present at that site. And um, we are not seeing any uh, intruders to speak of and they're being chased out very quickly when we do the hobo camps are gone um, so please uh, in in regard to that we will be coming to you shortly uh, with a new barrier um, and you will get to weigh in it's not going to be cheap if you want a nice um, masonry type wall um, which I personally support. I, I think chain link screams prison yards and schoolyards. Um, but these kinds of walls are expensive, depending on what you opt for. Project uh, with the new sidewalk uh, could easily come to $200,000. So uh, we're doing research and we will present some alternative plans shortly on reestablishing re that wall. Okay, uh, let's go around the table. Uh, David. I have nothing to report. You have, you have nothing for us, that's okay. Barbara. Um, in the, this month's uh, Yuko Reporter, you'll see an advertisement that AMR is going to come in in October. If you have any questions, tell your neighbors, come to the meeting. There'll be refreshments, but let me just tell you, when I first took over this job, I was told we're paying $1.45 per, per unit per month. Doesn't sound like much, but if you add it up, it's $11,000 a month we're paying. So come and ask questions and see if you're getting the right answers for what you're paying. Also, um, what Sebastian said, it's a shame. We're spending a lot of your money and you should be there because Sebastian takes votes on how we want to change that budget at the meeting. We made a lot of changes to bring the money down. 
You should be there, and if you can't, send someone from your building who can represent you. This is your money. Don't let anybody tell you what to do with it. If you don't come, that's what you're doing. Also, I just want to say a very happy, healthy New Year to everybody. Enjoy it. Uh, John. I have to uh, agree with what Barbara said there. Plus, we've already mentioned hurricanes, and uh, there's a couple out there in the Atlantic right now. They're north of us, but the waves are coming this way, so it'll be bouncing off the shores. It's not conducive to swimming, although I don't see a whole lot of you going to the beach. So, at any, at any rate, be aware, stay aware, make yourself, make sure you got your supplies. I talked to a lady yesterday, and she said there's a woman in her association seeing the news on on tv about the the hurricane you see with panic because you don't have her supplies yet so there is still some people that haven't haven't uh bit the bullet and went out there and got what they need so please be prepared thank you uh just one point i forgot um george came in and had a chat with me after the executive board uh, George is a COP volunteer. Uh, he tells me that the COP force is down to 12 people. Now, COP is the eyes and ears of PBSO. It's a very important function. It's presence, sheriff car, uh, lights, the reporting function. At some point, I don't know what the threshold is, but 12 can't be far away. They will pull the cell out of here, and that will be a grievous loss to village security. Please, if you have a few hours, uh, come, get trained, uh, patrol around in the sheriff's car, be seen, make reports, uh, if you see something, say something. No, no, you are not authorized to even get out of the car and talk to people, but you can make a report, and that's what the sheriff uh, expects of COP. So think about it. All right, Stuart. Uh, just a few items. Uh, the uh, Yuko reporter has a list of the Atlantic Broadband meetings for your association. It really is important that you inform everybody in your building to attend those meetings because at the last one, people asked a lot of questions uh, and it really illustrated their confusion as to what Atlantic Broadband was going to do and how they were going to do it. So you can either come to the office and get a copy and put it up on your bulletin board or remind your association members to read the uh, paper to get the information and attend the meeting and be prepared to ask pertinent questions which will resolve any of the issues that you may have. Uh, the police are out in force at 7.30 this morning. They stopped somebody for speeding in the village. So you, they are starting early, so um, be careful. You don't want to spend that kind of money and uh, donate it to the county. Another thing that kind of is sad, we have spent a lot of money for bus stops in Century Village. And we expect the people to be either sitting on the benches or near the bench, but not in the middle of the street. And what I've seen as I've been driving around, people standing in the middle of the street looking for the bus. And as I go around them and I look back to my rear window, uh, they're still there. So please remind people that we spent a lot of money for the bus stops. Please use it. And uh, the last thing is, as Barbara had said, we need you to attend the UCO meetings to provide us with your input. We are spending your money. And you should have an opportunity to be there to tell us what you think and what we're doing, if support us for if we're doing the right thing, or to provide us with your intellectual insight, and maybe we can do it even better. Thank you. That's it. All right. Um, uh, hold on. Hold on, guys. Take it easy. One at a time. Well, 
Oh, joy. <laughs> I forgot about joy. No, that's because the paper's out and it's successful. If it wasn't, maybe I would have remembered more. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to mention that we have launched, actually, Louise Warner, uh, the lovely lady that was sitting up at the table here that was running the clicker program, or t trying to run it, uh, has launched a new website, and it's www.ucoreporter.com. It is a wonderful website full of information. This is a website that goes out all over the world, not only in this country, but all over the world. And we're trying to get as much information in there as we can. So if you have anything that you would like to have posted, please let us know. We check everything out, of course, before we post it. But uh, we hope it will be successful, and we want to get some input back from our people. We also had a very good month at the report of this past month, because financially we did very well. Thank you to all the candidates that supported us. And we hope you're going to be back again next month, because as you can see, the results count. There was a lot of votes for cast here in Century Village, and a lot of the candidates are now in a runoff. And we're hoping for the best for them, that they all are successful in their endeavor to be elected. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Are you taking questions now, Mr. Israel? Um, no, but... <laughs> On your reports? Okay, then motion to adjourn. Why? No, 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 no. We would normally uh, field your questions, everybody's questions, uh, in good and welfare. But if... Well, the question is on your uh, if this is report critical, on the fence. Why don't you go ahead? Okay, thank you, David. Uh, we, we, we're all aware of you know, Mr. Waldman's at, uh, attitude towards the village and tearing down the fence just reinforces that. At this point, uh, putting up a permanent wall, obviously we need security there. Uh, I have observed and reported to the CAM that we have problems, uh, especially in the evenings at the Haverhill entrance with the... Come closer uh, to the mic. We have problems at the Haverhill entrance, yeah, especially in the evenings, with a, only one guard or maybe even two guards there on their phones, not even looking at that open area. Uh, he says they're on camera, we're gonna weed out those people. Um, but at this point, what will stop Waldman from tearing down the rest of the fence if there's more damage during this hurricane season or whatever? If we're putting up a very expensive wall, uh, are, are we gonna be able to cover the expense of replacing fencing if uh, you know, uh, he decides, well, let me knock it all down? Yeah, the, the temporary construction fence, quote, unquote, is some 6,500 feet long. Uh, he could tear it down, but that would signal that he no longer intended, <clears throat> excuse me, to build. And that does not apparently seem to be the case because he has... He fired his first engineer architect firm, Urban Kilde, and has hired a new one, uh, WGI. Coincidentally, the same company that's building the new development on the southern border of the, uh, the temple across the street. So it would appear that he intends uh, to come back to the commission and try again. And he has until 2023 to do it. So I don't think he'll be tearing down that fence uh, unless he decides formally that he's not going to build because he has to have that temporary construction fence. I mean, that's, that's just the law. So that's about the only thing I can tell you about that. Okay. Yeah. My, my question was do, do you see? Uh, it, that it's logical for us to put up a... a, a our a, own fence? No, our, you know, the wall. Oh. Uh, at a great expense, but you said over hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to put right. up a wall when we could put up an attractive fence like we've done around some of the, the pumps and things like that. The yeah, lease uh, has louvers or whatever. Of uh, course we could, but if you have concerns, the time will be when we come to take a vote on this as I say, that's going to be an expensive project. Right, but we're looking at other options besides a wall, Mr. President. Uh, no, that, that's one suggestion no, okay. in lieu of, of chain link. Uh, but, you, but, you, but you did mention that was what you were in favor of was a wall. I personally, I'm one vote. I know. Okay, <laughs> all right. Right? Thank you. All right. 
Um, this is where the lack of quorum becomes an insurmountable problem. We were going to vote on a nice new sign at the Okeechobee entrance. Uh, since there is no quorum, we will not vote on that matter, but I would point out to you another downside of quorum uh, is that the vote taken on this matter at the executive board now rules and that sign will be built. Uh, would, <laughs> okay. Uh, and it, there's, there's a kind of faded out picture in here of the sign, uh, but a few of you should have a nice color copy uh, to see what it looks like. Okay, Dan. Yeah, there's just uh, some uh, opinion about the sign. Uh, there are about maybe billions of uh, signs with the name village, but Century not so many. It should be vice versa. Century is very small, and village is huge. Yeah. The word century should be much, much larger. Yeah, uh, Bobby Levin brought this up. Uh, it's certainly something we can look at. I don't know, I don't know how, if at all, it would impact the course cost, uh, but whether it can be changed readily. Well, it can be changed, anything can be done. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. I think there's some validity in your argument. Um, Elaine. Elaine Brown, Sussex L. Yes, just a couple of questions about the uh, sign. Hmm. Congratulations on all the effort you put into this. Um, I assume all these words, for Wellington Dry Tierra Gold panels, that's aluminum. It isn't actually stone at the bottom of the sign. It looks like stone masonry, but I assume it's it's it, it, it's that's a, it, all aluminum. It, it's um, a Falx stone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like in Falx Pox. Now the the sign is beginning to grow on me. Uh, uh, um. Barbara knows a great deal about the sign. You want to respond to this? The, no, yeah. there's more. Uh, what? Clay Basket Brown. Hmm. Um, what, what is the color of the extra trim? It, it's looking a little pink, you know, like yeah. a, a Meisner tier, yeah. uh, that's, terracotta. No, that I is... I like that. That's an no error pink. in the scan. No pink. No, no pink. This is more like it. Right here. Right? Give, give Elaine that kind of... Oh, brown, brown. It, it, you know, I don't know whether to call it beige or, or what. I thought you were trying to make us look more I'm, palm I'm not beachy. that good on color, but it's not pink. And it's not purple. All okay. Right. I will be starting a betting pool to see who can drive into it first. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's resistant to 170 mile an hour winds. <laughs> it is. All right. Okay. That, that's, that's it. Thank you. David. Huh? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. Yeah. Uh, I just want to tell you, people have been here, or well, most of you have been here a long time. For five years, the Beautification Committee has tried to get a new sign. Because the complications with the uh, county with the um, turnpike authorities. We can't change the sign unless we do, which we're going. This sign is going to be parallel to Okeechobee. It's not gonna be the way the sign is now, okay? Just so you know. But I wanna tell you something. Five years ago, they wanted $64,000 approximately. We don't have that kind of money. So this year, the Beautification Committee, and they have worked very hard on this, they went out and they got bids. Well, one bid came in around 63,000, which we couldn't even look at, because we don't have the money. We got another bid, came in around 34,000, and this bid came in to what you're looking at, approximately 20, which is well within our budget. Our budget's $26,000. We're not looking to make a magnificent sign out there, because we don't have the money, but we want to bring the entrance up to date. 
So people who drive in here realize we're not back 45 years. If you go on Okeechobee and you go to Golden Lakes, you will see they made a brand new sign. Their sign was 40 years old. This is the same company who made their sign. If you want to look at the work they do, there's a number of places they have done signs that we've checked out. So we're just trying to update the look of the entrance, not to make some monument out there within our budget. That's what we're trying to do. And I want to thank Arlene and Judy for passing out the, the uh, copies that we had. I'm sorry they didn't come out the color, Elaine, but pink is not the color, I guarantee you. All right, um, so the sign is a go. Committee reports, if any, are contained in the packet. Uh, and we're gonna go now into uh, good and welfare, or good of the order. And um, I'd like to call up uh, Mr. Commodore, uh, ask me for a few seconds. Uh, he really wants to thank Century Village for uh, their efforts. So Sir. thank you everyone. Again, I'm Lloyd Commodore, but I'm no longer running for county court judge. I lost in the August 28th election. But I want to thank everyone for the opportunity for letting me come to your meetings every month and getting to know you. I've enjoyed it. Um, you now have two candidates to choose from, Ashley Zuckerman and Legra Fung, so that you guys will make the right choice. But again, thank you. Thank you for the board for allowing me to stay and hope you all have a good day. All right, now, before we get going, Dan, um, I'd like to give Pey Peyton a chance if he has something to, to say to us. Peyton, uh, Senior uh, ad Administrative Assistant to Commissioner Burdick and Port Commissioner. A little of everything. Just wanted to say Happy New Year, Lashana Tova. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, also rang greetings not only from Paulette, who's in a, she's a little lady, but she's driving a big RV to Tallahassee. Wow. It looks very strange seeing that little lady driving that great big RV. But anyway, but she sends her best. And also, I want to thank you. You elected Joe Anderson to replace me. He's going to be very good. Today he's at work. He works for the city of Palm Beach Gardens. But I wanted to give you his best as well. And I was telling um, David earlier to leave me on the list. Because unlike most people who stop coming to see you when they're out of office or whatever, I will come back. I'm not going to come back every month. 